Welcome to the Only God Stories podcast, where we believe testimonies are powerful. In this podcast, your faith will be built as we hear from people from all walks of life who recognize the power of God in their lives. To hear more testimonies or for the opportunity to share a story of your own, check us out on our website at onlygodstories.org. Hey everybody, welcome to the Only God Stories podcast. Um, I'm joined by my wife, Tiffany, our co-host, and our dear friends, Nick and Sarah Bodoin. And man, we are so excited to be able to jump in with them um, as they are um, some really good friends, like I said, already out of the gate. And um, we've gotten the chance to be able to get to know them really over this past year. Uh, but Nick and Sarah, welcome to the podcast. Thanks for having us. Uh, well, hey, to get started, man, we'd love just to introduce you a little bit, let the guests know, like, who are we talking to today to be on the Only God Stories podcast? They've got to have a story of God moving. So um, who are we talking to? Tell us a little more about yourselves and introduce yourselves to the, to the, everybody listening. Yeah, I'm Nick and this is my wife, Sarah. We've been married for 13 years now. Uh, joyous year. We've got three little ones. We've got a fourth on the way. Uh, hey. The way today. I think it's Yay. Be- I don't know. Okay. Yeah. So, so we're moving towards the fourth. We get two boys, a little girl, and another boy on the way, which was quite a surprise. But as mm-hmm. God always does, He provides beautiful surprises. So, um, that that's our family. It's going to be a family of six years soon. But we're we're living in Fayetteville, Arkansas, and we'll pick so we fall on the Lord's will uh, on our move up here, which I know we get into more. But had a few moves along the way, and. Um, mostly professional moves for me and Sarah now stays home with our kids and we're uh, grateful believers in Jesus, but just happy to share yeah. a little bit of the story and what he's doing in our life today. And that's good. And I'll just tell you this about their kids. Their kids are awesome. They've got lots of energy, lots of adventure. Like my kids always want to hang out with theirs because all the time, they, all and the time. Daily. First There's thing a, in the like, morning. Are we, are we, are we, their house? Are we seeing them today? Are we hanging could, out? Could they babysit us? That was their most recent. No, Ashlyn. Yeah, Ashlyn said, "Mom, can can you guys go on a date so that way the Bodoins can come babysit us?" Because <laughs> we told her that they couldn't go there that day. Uh, but yes, it's so so much fun having just our families together. Our kids are best friends, and we have a really intertwined story. So this podcast is a little different because our story and your story is very intertwined. Yep. Because 2021 was a pretty big shift for, I would say, both of our families, to say the least. And for us and the Bodoin family, we were all actually in Texas around the same area going to the same exact church, but just in different locations. And now both families are here in northwest Arkansas, 15 minutes door to door, essentially. And that that I would say journey is nothing short of a God story and so for 2021 it was a big shift for you all and a lot of it has to do with Sarah and just some stuff that she had going on so Sarah could you share a little bit about that y'all's 2021 yeah so as an said, we had moved quite a bit before to that um for this work did primarily because of you know Nick as the driver and so really did bring in this scenario. Um, I had a dream in February, towards the end of February, 2021. Um, I saw uh, Nick going into ministry in the dream and meeting with some of his This is like a a dream when you're actually like sleeping kind of dream, right? And I like, hey, I have a dream that this is going to happen, right? Yeah. Okay. Dreaming. Sleeping dream. And he's never been in ministry, you know, it's pretty, some kind of just off the wall things, I guess. But, um, I was meeting some of his new coworkers and their spouses, and he, we were talking about the area. And I was seeing pictures of the area in the dream, you know, a big, beautiful lake and hills and mountains nearby, and commenting like, "I had no idea any of this was even here. What a beautiful area!" You know, I'm so thankful to be here. And um, woke up from the dream and knew it was from the Lord. And just mm. to kind of precurse that, I've had like maybe a handful of prophetic dreams, nothing quite like that, nothing. For myself, you know, nothing for our lives, but usually a friend or a word for someone, you know, to yeah. share that. That's good. A little more you're, sim- you're a dreamer. Like you're yeah. a dreamer. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so when it comes from the Lord, for me, there's just this strong feeling like, like the Lord is communicating something, not necessarily exactly what I saw in the dream, but he's communicating something. So I have that sense when I woke up. 
and mm. just started praying about it. I think before I even shared, you know, Lord, what is it? And it could be multiple facets facets of the dream but for sure it was this location you know you, i'm mm -hmm. sending you there and so i was like where was it because it was never said in the dream but I'm like where was it at one point <laughs> the dream i had had dinner with an old teacher and cheerleading coach that i hadn't connected with since high school and he Dude. said look up where she lives it's where she lives and she i looked it up and she lived in springdale arkansas so hey wow and, and before I got it too much deep, deeper, I should just say, when this woman says something that has a dream, I trust it. And when we say dreamer, it's not the same kind of dreamer that I am. I'm like the business dreamer, the financial dreamer, the day dreamer, the where are we going next uh, kind of trip dreamer. She's the opposite. She's like the rooted one, inner word, yes. misconsistent. So to, so to dream and think we'd be moving out of Texas, a place we loved after just being there two years, and I had this dream career that, that God had moved us there for initially, uh, was a pretty big shockwave. But but immediately, I think in, in my heart and my spirit, I, I knew that this was something that we had to follow. And I think we had that that shared belief that this was from the Lord from, from day one. And the unpacking of it took a while longer, which we can talk through, through but... Uh, mm -hmm. On that day, uh, for both of us, I woke up that same morning and I had a, a similar uh, vision from the Lord that I was going to be doing something in ministry. And I kind of just tried to get that out of my mind at the time because wow. I, I had a career that I loved, but uh, I didn't think much about it. I kind of just went out with my day and Sarah and I had the chance to talk that night and we compared our stories and uh, we knew it was God's uh, breath and, and only God. Wow. For sure, mm -hmm. that was starting to write that story. So cool. We had, we had such like we had a very similar thing on our end. So you were saying how like you had your dream, Sarah. You had your um, just w whatever that was for you, that feeling, Nick, or that word from the Lord that you're kind of pushing aside. So around the same time, it would have been probably a couple months difference. We're on a staff retreat. So like I said, we're all at the same church, different locations, uh, different campuses because it was a multi-site church. And our campus, my husband, Joseph, he was on staff. And That's me. we were on a we were on a retreat with the staff and the spouses. So we're all on this retreat and I just get this feeling. For me, it was a feeling. Um, I it would have been way cooler to have a dream. It would have been cool, right? It would have been cooler. <laughs> but yeah, maybe it was a feeling. For me, it was like cool. this this feeling that God's telling me something. And all I could all I could think was God was saying, like, we're we're about to leave this church. Like it's coming to an end. And I, I tried to think of other possibilities of what could I actually be feeling. But I went home. We went home from that retreat, and I journaled that day. And it was in April of 2021. And I journaled. I said, God, are we being called away from this church? And if so, make it obvious. And I did not tell a soul. Like, I didn't. We were at that church for 10 years, and we were in Texas for 10 years. We spent our entire entire married lives there. Like we got married, moved to Texas two months later, had kids. We we've, we've raised our family there, and I just felt like I can't. Like I, it didn't even seem like an option, and we never expected it. So I had this feeling. I pray that prayer. I journal it. If that's what you're saying, God, make it obvious. And three days later, God made it almost painfully obvious, but He made it obvious. <laughs> And I remember Joseph and I, like, we needed a reset that day. So I said, hey, let's take the kids to my parents' house and let's go have dinner. And we went to have dinner. And I want to say, I think it was like a Red Lobster. Because we were, yeah, that's another story. We were in Red dining. Lobster. Fine dining. <laughs> but for the area, we Those cheddar moved. biscuits are amazing. I mean, yeah, that, I like that I had to be an only it. God story. Whoever made yeah. those. Had to be a little bit. Seriously. <laughs> the cheddar we bacon. We got our own Goddard lobster story. So the bit, there's something in the biscuits for sure. Yeah. <laughs> no, no. Uh, oh, no. No. I didn't even know. That's uh, amazing. I had no idea. But I remember that so we we drove over to the nearest town and went to Red Lobster. And I got out my journal and I said, Joseph, I think that what you experienced today is God's answer to my prayer. And I think that he is calling us away. And Joseph had shared at this dinner he said well not too long back because we we had been at the church 10 years but he had only been on staff for eight and not too long ago before that they had this like 10-year celebration for everybody who had been on staff for 10 years 
And Joseph said, and I'll never forget him telling me, he says, I felt in that moment that God was telling me I would never make it to the 10 years there. And we were, you know, just a couple years shy of that 10 years. And for our plans, like we never wanted to leave, like we never thought we'd leave. So it definitely came out of left field for both of us mm -hmm. or whatever field. Nick's a baseball person. I don't even know. One of those fields. Came Nick's from not fields. nowhere. Corn <laughs> <need> to, <laughs> I need to be careful about saying <laughs> analogies that I don't so. fully understand. Yeah. Yep. Um, but it just came out of nowhere. Um, and I felt. I felt crazy for thinking it, but yeah. Well, well, tell tell us. I mean, because I, I mean, it, it, to have a dream and for both of you to feel the same way, like walk us through some of that journey. Like, how do you go from, all right, we're settled, we're placed in Texas, we feel like this is a place, dream job, all the things. Um, walk us through what. How does that shift take place? Obviously, you're in Arkansas now, but there's a lot of the layers in there in between. So, walk us through that a little bit. Yeah, I think at first initial feeling was excitement, you know, about this new thing and God speaking, because that's really exciting. You know, I don't always get to hear the word so clearly. So that's just exciting. As we yeah. drift away from God speaking in that dream, came fear, came doubt, came yeah. sadness, mm -hmm. came, I love Texas. I'm a Texan for life. I love this house. I love this school. You know, just a lot of flesh, you know, and the world just cramming it out what I heard and what I was excited about it didn't stop us from going I don't think in any part of the journey but it made it more difficult and less yeah and I think even even naysayers like people who are around on us that that doubt um did, did you really hear from the Lord or are you sure that's the right move for you but but I would say too it was very important for us to process with other believers people we trust who, who all landed at the same spot that if you're feeling the Lord call you in this direction, you prayed about it, it lines up with scripture, you gotta go, you gotta go. But I, I think other people around us, neighbors and and other friends that would wanna sow some doubt into it, not intentionally, not trying to, you know, undermine what God's calling us to do, but I think just worldly doubts, if you will. And we had some of yeah. those ourselves. And from my perspective, I didn't know what I was gonna do with my career like this was a lot better job than the way I'd come out of which also was a, a good career but this is somewhere I loved it had no interest in moving mm -hmm. away from or out of and we're in the midst of COVID so just based on on the year perfect uh, time was, to move yeah yeah, nice. yeah perfect <laughs> time to move <laughs> housing market real estate market so was way cooled down and uh <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It, grass, but it was the best time ever to buy a Be house best time to buy terrible time to sell I, I'm, a high, I'm, a, high. I'm a high activator. And so I jumped right in like the, the next day after we prayed about it and started to process this. And I thought, all right, there, there's a big employer here in, in Northwest Arkansas. Um, I've heard of them. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, yeah well. and most people have. And so I applied to this, to, to Walmart and I, I put in my application for a role that was equivalent to mine just on a whim. We put it away for like three or four months, just continue praying, kind of looking at the market. Um, it's a here and trying to understand, we hadn't even visited yet. Uh, is this really, God, what, what you would have for us, where you want us to be? And and praying that God would open the door for the job or close the door for the job, you know, like God and this, okay. it will, but this stream is yeah. you following, you know, speak to us through this job specifically. And, and let mm -hmm. me figure out what the ministry looks like when we get there, because I need a job to get us moved. And yeah. so they called back uh, a few months later and, and things looked really well. And, and we kind of reignited uh, the dream and the, the pursuit, if you will, we've been praying about it. So this is the confirmation we're waiting for, for kind of the, my job sense. And they offered the role and we came up over uh, the 4th of July weekend, which I know you guys Wait, are jumping in here. Yes, yeah, a side note. We also came up the 4th of July weekend, and I'll share, like, whenever you're done with this, I'll share that weekend about us because it's wild that we, and I don't think we said it earlier, but we did not know each other in Texas. At all. Like, our families didn't know each other. So, yes, we were at the same church. We were at different campuses, had never met. Uh, but go ahead, Nick. You were up here 4th of July weekend. And then getting called to the same area, showing up for the first time again to get this official call on on the Fourth of July weekend. But it was it was that weekend and that interview that kind of sealed the deal with that company. And they offered the role. We prayed about it. 
the, the whole way up. And while we were here, it's just, what are you going to speak to us? Please speak to us where he wants to be. And we felt peace. We felt peace and the quiet whisper of God. We didn't hear audibly like, this is where you need to be. But but we drove around and really sensed that this is where God would have us be. And and then the job offer came and very shortly after officially and we thought about a month later. Yeah. I guess. So we had already, we were going, we were going, yeah. I guess. And um, anyway, I uh, ended up turning that job down because God's good and can make a way under any circumstance. I told my current employer, I'm going to move. Uh, I feel like God's calling me into a ministry role. I told him this, you know, because at this point it was like nothing to lose. You got way yeah, nothing anymore. to lose. This is what God wants us to do. Like, quite, right. yeah, I'm just going to tell my fortune 100 company um, head of HR. <laughs> uh, pretty um, taking pretty a role risky in the It is uh, a risky move. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. And, and instead, she said, no, what did she say? It will match, you know, it'll match the compensation and, and go ahead and move up and be fully remote. And we just, we just really felt at that point. Mind blowing. Like, so cool. Oh like, who God. does that? That only God. Right. Yeah. And, and they had just moved up to Texas, less than two years before, and they didn't have remote workers. They currently don't allow people to, you know, live in a different area and work for, you know, wow. no one in thought or the company have to live in, you know, these certain areas. So, yeah. He, he made a way. So, yeah. So And I love that you pursued the other job and, like, you felt, like, confirmation through the other job. And sometimes I think that happens, especially in some Only God stories where it's like you think that you're taking one path and really God was just using that to speak to you and then just changes the direction a little bit and provides in another way. Yeah. But I think it's even cooler about this story than, than just ours or just yours is like the beautiful uh, synchrony of the two stories. So I want to hear about your yes. guys for the July. Yeah. yeah. T- Tiffany, I'll let, I'll let you drive this one. All right. Okay, I'll, I'll lead this one. 4th of July, 2021. So where I left off was April of that year where we had this feeling, but we continued showing up at church. Joseph was still on staff. We were, um, we weren't necessarily holding it tight, but we were in a stage of listening. I think that's a fair to say. We were just listening because we didn't know what was next. We had absolutely no, I wasn't working on my resume. I, I still don't even know where it is. I'm really, we we just knew God is moving and he's going to tell us when he's ready. And so until then, Okay, we're not going to hit the 10-year mark. We know that, so we at least have a year and a half. And then and then we'll figure it out, at least by then. And so July hit, and we're in Arkansas. So Joseph is from Arkansas. We're visiting family. We'll fix and it. we end up going to breakfast at a really um, good friend. He's our old pastor from our college-age young adult days. And so we were headed to his house for breakfast on the way to his house. Uh, that weekend, same weekend that you guys got this confirmation, which is just wild to me. We were also driving around and we've been asking ourselves, like, where does God want us? Is he asking us to move? And we've spent several months praying about it. And as we were driving through Springdale, which if you don't remember is what Sarah said, the place Sarah said that they felt called to through mm-hmm. her dream, um, we were passing through Springdale on our way to his house. And we just, Joseph looks at me and he says, I feel like I feel like Springdale is a place like I feel like this could be the place God wants us. And we're just looking around and I said, yeah, and we I never thought that moving too. back to Arkansas. No, like never. Um, I, I loved Texas. Sarah too, said Sarah. she's a Texas girl and she loves I, it. Um, I, especially I went, the area where I we're in. I of obedience. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but we never thought we'd leave Texas. And but I was I was agreeing. I was in agreement with it. Yeah, I think Springdale yeah. could be it. And that, that morning, we have breakfast with him, and we didn't say any of this, but at the end of breakfast, he looks at us, so this is Josh Foliar, and he says, now let me ask you a big question. His, his wife, Cassandra, if you know, if you've ever merged, she goes, oh, okay, here we go, because she knows it's yeah, it, because they've been processing it for a few weeks now at this time. He said, let me ask you a question. Would you ever consider moving up here and doing ministry with me in Springdale, Arkansas. Mind blown again. Like we looked at each other and we're just like, yes, we would absolutely consider that. But we didn't, we didn't know anything yet. We didn't have jobs. Like we didn't know it wasn't a job offer by any means. It was just this idea. Yeah. And we had nothing really tangible to go on. 
but we had the confirmation and that's all we needed and we knew god would figure out the rest so we had this like spark of excitement we are so excited like this is this is it this is where god wants us we don't know what it looks like but we'll take steps sure so we went home and um joseph you can probably talk more about how we we just submitted it to the yeah, church. I mean, we, we just went through the their process and uh, put it in front of them, like prayed in process for their, their set amount of time and came back and said, we feel like this is the right move and right step for you. And um, we ended up landing here um, literally at almost the exact same time because why not as Nick and Sarah. Um, and so we landed here December 1st and closed in our house the last day of the year um, that day, which that's another only God story that we can maybe save, maybe share. We'll see kind of where it goes. But um, Nick and Sarah, what what I know about you guys from being around you is that, uh, I mean, you guys will follow the Lord with just boldness and obedience. And um, even if, <laughs> whether you do it quickly or whether it's slow and then all of a sudden you move and move quick, um, I would love to know just what you guys would say to just encourage somebody else to maybe want to follow another crazy, like, feel like God's asking me to do this, go to this direction. Like, um, what encouragement would you give to somebody else that it's in it's kind of the same position or the same boat? I just feel for me that the that, that keys is in obedience, you know, and it's just nothing else is worth it, you know, to, to give up God's keys, mm -hmm. to just walk in from path, you know, it's just not worth it following in his obedience, whatever he's calling, no matter how crazy it may seem. And if you have doubters in your life or people around you, like find the people that will support you that, you know, love the Lord and will help you. Yeah. If you're discerning, help finding people that know the Lord, it can help you discern, you know, what you're supposed to do. But I think the big thing is just obedience. You know, He provides when so, so, so much when we are obedient and it's just so worth it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I think from my perspective, it's been, it's been faith building, you know, to step out into a place that mm -hmm. has ever been where we didn't have connections. Like, thank the Lord we did with you guys and all those parallels. It's just been an amazing transition for us. And, you know, as I processed it and kind of felt my faith growing in the situation, the Lord's going to be there to, to meet us in that waiting and and the, he desired it for us to to some extent that we would have that season of processing i think together and really evaluating the situation but it's a faith building exercise but ultimately we, we both on the other end of this move and transition uh to arkansas it's about 18 months ago now we still know that god's writing a big part of this story but we mm -hmm. feel so much peace to what sarah said and so we know we're in the right place we know we're in the right house that the Lord wants us to be in. So we came here and I'm trying to run a gun and, and find all these different he, houses that I think would Which, see. if you don't know Nick, Nick says he's an activator. He means that 100%. There's an <laughs> so idea. We have four hours in. We have four hours in before we get ground. All of them got, got you know, thrown out over asked T price. We were, we were reaching and not really where God wanted us to be. He had spoken to me a few weeks before coming here that. We were going to be at a particular church, the same church as the elders. And, and I felt peace of that because we didn't know where we were going to be. And, and the bodies that we end up, up in are so important for us and where we build community, you know, where mm -hmm. we're going to really experience the next of what God has for us. Okay. And that part was checked off. That was easy. But I started looking at homes that they are 45 minutes away, you know, near the big corporate headquarters, just in case my job falls through that yeah. I currently have. I should be closer to where. That big I go, a backup plan. That's right. And so we started there. And then we slowly started working down to where we are today, five minutes from the church. So we did house, uh, stayed on seed purchased, but in, in smaller, cheaper, all those things than what we had in Texas because we really felt the Lord calling us to just season that certification mm. and that this was going to be a growing season. If I'm going to set up for ministry eventually, I can't be moving into a house equivalent or bigger than what we had before. Right. Uh, and there were some really practical steps he was calling us it too, but um, that's that's a little bit about our journey and, and what he's still continuing to write. But the peace and our faith ground and friends met and family thriving is really what merits thriving in, in a lot of different ways of our lives. We just know that God, God's sin is all over it for sure. So good. I love it because... A lot of these only God stories, it's like we could have done all the planning in the world. Like we have no idea who you all were 
we had no idea that your story was being beautifully intertwined with ours at the time. But I know for us, like we've had a lot of healing, I would say just coming out of a very long stretch of ministry, exhaustive ministry in a lot of ways. We've had a lot of feeling of healing, sorry, in our relationship with you, um, just in being able to see even our friends or our kids have friends, having these healthy friends who understand where we came from, understand where we go, we're going. And it's interesting because neither one of us, as far as your family or ours, really know what's next. Like we still don't have an actual picture of what this ministry, what the word Springdale is, and that's okay. Like we are sure. still walking it out. So this is a story that's not even done yet, which is also pretty exciting. But in the meantime, it's been so fun. So I know we were saying how we went to the same church. Nick, you called that out. And our first weekend at this church was your first weekend too. So we hadn't met, like I said, but somebody connected us and they said, hey, you're moving to Arkansas. Somebody else is too. You should see if you're going to be close to each other. And so we started texting right before the move. And we end up at the same church. We meet that very first weekend. So that was our first face-to-face -face meeting. And we've been in community groups, small groups, whatever you want to call it. We've been in those ever since. I think we're in our third group together, right? We. I don't know if we're ending and we're starting. Yeah. Yeah. You guys are such an encouragement for us. And um, God is just so good to, to send us and you guys. I, I mean, thankful that you would say that because you, you have some connections here and, and you need us to kind of thrive in this area. But I think we did you to have friends that immediately then knew our backstory too and some of the things that we could share that we had been processing too. But it's been such an encouragement and touch from God for sure. And I just encourage people to to go after what God's called you to do because you yeah. know what it's a little scary like it's always going to be good and to know that our stories from back in the spring the same time March April of Sarah here and that we're uh, starting to process to July 4th Joseph and I both get the offers for our jobs after that weekend <laughs> to going up December 1st on the same Sunday this was not church thank goodness I know yeah. just, you know and too many random occurrences it's just definitely the Lord's doing. And so oh, and sure. uh, I'm excited to continue to see what he's doing in this story. Love it. Love it. Guys, I think that is really good. And what I what I hope you hear from Nick and myself is that we have really wise wives. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we do. They, they typically <laughs> hear it before we do, um, but yeah. we get there eventually. <laughs> right. And so maybe, maybe that's even a word for somebody today to say. That's if, a real takeaway. If right? you have somebody no, in your no, lives, as a discerning spirit, trust that discerning spirit. And um, I love what you said, um, Nick and Sarah, both of how this season is really, it's built your faith um, along the journey. Um, but also even for you, Sarah, to be able to say that it has added even just, there's peace in the obedience is what you said. And um, I just love how, um, how you're able to express that for something that was a pretty big move. Um, mm -hmm. But you also said something pretty, pretty critical, I think, is that, Hey, find the right voices that discern and listen to the Lord. And you didn't say find the people that will just say yes. Hey, just do it. Yep, just yes. But it's well, who are the right voices? And and I feel like for all of us, I think that is what you guys are to us is the right voices that we can process with and yeah. um, listen to the Lord. Um, and we're thankful that the Lord has intertwined our stories. And as Tiffany said, the story's still being written. We don't know what it's fully going to look like, um, but we know that God is moving. Um, and he's done some incredible things to get you guys here and to get us as here, us here as well. So, um, Tiffany, any other, any, anything else you want to add before we wrap up here? No, I'm just excited for your growing family and excited yeah, to live baby. this next season of life, uh, continuing side by side together. And I'm excited what God's going to do in your life because it's going to be, it's going to be fun to have a front row seat to that. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, Hey, here's, here's our last, our last takeaway is that uh, at least what I'm going to say is the tagline for today, that there is peace in the obedience. And so, hey, listeners, thanks for being with us again today. Um, we're so thankful to be able to sit here with Nick and Sarah and can't wait to be able to be back with you in two more weeks. Thanks. Thank you for listening to the Only God Stories podcast. Be sure to follow us on social media as we share more stories like these. And don't forget to check out our website at onlygodstories.org for more information on how you can share how the power of God has moved in your life.